Hello everyone, I am Phoenix from Maine and I just watched the latest episode of uh, Married to Medicine and I'm going to dive right in. Once again, I have two, uh, page, two pages, well a page, both sides filled with notes. Um, it was a good episode, so we got a lot to talk about, unpack. But first, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I need every subscriber I can on this channel so that we can grow, do bigger and better things. But I'm ready to dive right into Married to Medicine. Now, this episode started off with Allure. Um, it was a couple other little vignettes, but they didn't really, you know, we really want to talk about Mariah doing the split. I love Mariah. She did a good split. But, you know, we just had a few small vignettes. And then the show really got started when... Um, Heavenly was talking to Allura and you know she was being grown and sassy and 12 years old lip gloss all this kind of stuff and um but 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 once we were able to get past the cutesy stuff we got straight into um Dr. Heavenly um telling Damon about what um Mariah saying that he was cheating and she had proof and let me tell you it was like seeing somebody kick a care bear. <laughs> it's like it was just you know you don't you don't like kick Mickey Mouse. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't you don't you know. I mean, he's such a nice guy. Uh, on on the on the screen, it looked like his heart broke into a million pieces, and I was like, he was like, why would anybody say that about me? It was like, why? So, um, yeah, I was like, wow, you know, these, you know, these women, they throw these jabs back and forth, but, you know, some of these guys didn't sign up for that, you know, and, um, I really felt him, his hurt in that episode because he really looked like, you know, somebody shot his puppy, you know what I'm saying? Um, or kicked his puppy. I don't want to say shot his puppy. Somebody kicked his puppy. Um... Then we moved on to Scott and Contessa, and if you watched any Murray the Medicine, Medicine review I've done um, on here, you know that I think they're the most boring couple on the show. And I, when I saw that she was going to be in this season, I was like, "Why? Why is she back?" But I have to say, it was only a moment, but. When her kid was choking, um, if you don't know, I used to be a paramedic, a firefighter and a paramedic. So, um, in instinctively, all of my paramedic skills <laughs> kicked in with, you know, everything you got to do when a kid or a person is choking, the whole sweep them off, all that kind of stuff. We, we did all that in clinicals and, you know, so my paramedic instincts just like kicked right in like, what's going on? You know, you do it, you know, get it out. You know, so um, it threw me back a little bit in time. And then when she talked about her father and how he was um, a drug addict and he had all these illnesses. Because we know when you do drugs, it messes up this and it messes up that after years of abuse. And, you know, I really felt for her. I mean, of course, that, that horrible wig she was wearing was distracting. But I still felt something. Now, yeah, it had me torn. Like, am I actually feeling having a moment with Contessa? Is, is this really happening? But I see in the next episode, she's back to the Contessa that I'm going to find really annoying again. But anyway, so that caught me off guard. I actually had um, the warm and fuzzies for uh, Contessa because I had compassion. Now, one thing I will say before I move on about Contessa and Scott they are a good couple. They are relationship, marriage goals for should be for a lot of people. They are very, you know, they they look good on paper. You know, they ain't gone through the the season where they got to fight with each other, but you know, right now Contessa Scott, they look solid. He protected her the end of the episode. Good couple. They're just boring when it comes to reality TV. I have nothing against Contessa and Scott. They're just boring. They're not entertaining to me. That's why I don't want them on the show. They're just not entertaining. Um, 
Oh, <laughs> then we went to Quad. So, um, only thing I really saw when I first saw Quad were breasts jiggling <laughs> with no with no restraint, no bra. And um, I said, I think we are about to get the old quad. The quad that I used to enjoy, liked, have fun. She's not around to marry with children, marry with, marry with medicine chicks. She shouldn't be like, she said, these are like her real sisters. And I can tell that they don't have chemistry. Um, just in that scene, they all look like strangers sitting in a scene. But I did love seeing Selena for R&B Divas because she was one of my favorite R&B divas on the show. And you know, I know that that Selena, I like Selena. So it was nice seeing her even for a few moments. I don't know who the other chick was, but I don't watch Sister Circle. But um, then it went to um, Quad rewriting history <laughs> about how the girls did her wrong. She painted herself in a corner as the victim with these women constantly coming after her. And she hasn't done anything to anybody. And then um, the tears came. And then I said, please don't let every single episode of Married to Medicine this season be quiet crying in every episode. Because this is what happens when, you know, you're taking like an acting class and you, you were able to get that, that them, them tears to come on command. So my note was, she complains about the lack of support despite text and phone calls. Now she said they texted me and they called me, but that wasn't enough. What do you want them to do? You want them to beg? You want them to grovel? You want them to hunt you down? You want them to storm sister circle? You want them to put you in a corner and say, hey look, we're going to show you support whether you like it or not. And, and you know Quad's not going to react well to that. Quad is going to freak out and cry and have a fit and cuss them all out. That's what would happen if they went and stormed Quad's house or whatever and tracked her down and, and tried to like, look, we're going to be friends with you whether you like it or not. Quad wouldn't have reacted well to that. So the girls in the last episode said we called her, we texted her with no response or lack of response. So it was like, if you're not feeling them because you feel like you're going to be judged. So when they do call and text and you're not really responsive, then how are they not supported to you if you're not even allowing them to be in your space? I mean, she was only in one scene the whole episode. So, and trust me, if that one scene wasn't there, the show would have been just fine. So maybe Quad needs to stick with Sister Circle because she's not bringing anything to the table to marry to Madison. Although in the trailer for next week, Mariah hit her. <laughs> I was like, what? Wait, 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 what? You know, usually... They love and hip hop it, which means nobody actually gets hit. It's a bunch of lunging. But yeah, <laughs> Mariah was just a little bit too close. And she hit Quad, and Quad was like, I didn't touch you. You know. So, um, so then after Quad gets so tearful and she's so hurt, and, and then she like snaps out of it to give the rest of her story. That's why I say acting lessons, crying on cue. And then she goes right from pulling herself together to crying again to joking with the other chicks. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. You know, oh, God, Quad. And keep in mind, Quad used to be one of my favorites in the first couple of seasons. I love me some Quad, but this victim Quad is getting on my nerves. Um, so t now this is what I really loved in this episode. Um, Toya decides to celebrate her husband's promotion instead of her birthday. And, um, it really showed me that Toya has learned a lot. Um, because she, she did come off spoiled oftentimes and very, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and just, making it all about her and and it was just really nice to see that she gave Eugene some honest love and really made it about him. It is it's something that you do when you love somebody. You you're comfortable with it not always being about you. As long as it 
you is give and take. Um, cause this kind of, this is how I am in my relationship. I always think about, you know, I've always put the relationship first and, you know, I make sure feelings are good and, you know, that we're in a good place and, you know, there's lots of surprises and gifts and all this kind of stuff and it goes both ways. So, you know, I really like that Toya did that because actually that's something I probably would have done. Um, well, actually, let me take that back. I'm the type of person that would have celebrated the promotion before it was happening, during, and after. I wouldn't have let it slide to to get to my birthday. We wouldn't have got that far. But if for some reason it did, I can see me doing something like that. So Simone, um, uh, Simone, Simone, Simone. I love Simone, just like I love Jackie. Mariah is still my favorite. But, you know, and I love Toya. You know, only one I'm not feeling is Quad and Contessa. But Simone took the picture from last week's uh, um, sexy party, whatever you want to call it, Lever and Lace party. And she decided that uh, first she showed the dog. And the dog got scared of the picture, which was like... You're not used to seeing her, her like that dog. You know what I'm saying? You know, she, she obviously doesn't do that enough for, for him or the dog to give a visual representation of her being sexy at home. I know it's a dog. Forgive me. Um, but Simone picture scares a dog. And then Simone wants to put the picture next to the TV so that every time Cecil watches TV, because she knows he's going to watch TV, he's going to watch the game, he, he, that TV's going to be there. She wants to make sure that he sees her looking sexy and be distracted by the picture of her being sexy. Now, let me, let me break this down to you from a, from a guy's point of view. We ain't having sex. We had no sex. You ain't you ain't giving me no head. You ain't you ain't giving up the the nana. And but you want to put a picture in my bedroom that we don't share, so that I can stare at what I can't have. Is that that's torture? And that is the kind of that's torture. Okay, that's that's passive aggressive behavior. You know what I'm saying? It, it's very passive aggressive. It's, it's one of those microaggressions where it's like, it seems like she's doing something good, but at the same time, you know, there's like a backhand that comes, comes right after it. Like, hey, look at me, but you can't touch. It was, it, and then she got, and then I could see in Simone's face that she was genuinely hurt when he didn't want to stare at her picture because she knew that it would be a distraction. And in her mind, her her, her mind, she's thinking, um, oh, this is going to make you want me. He already wants you. For the last 22 years, you know, he already wants you. And he don't, and like when he said he came in and he said, you ain't had to give me no gift. He's, he stopped just short of saying, uh, just give me some. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I saw that she's trying to do the things for him that she probably wants him to do for her. But she's speaking in girl language and he's speaking in guy language. And they're not, they're talking all over each other. It's Mars and Venus. Just, just like, no. Where it's the simplest, she gave him kids. So it was like, it's not like you ain't had none. You know, all you got to do is give him some. I mean, doesn't, obviously, based on last episode and this episode, um, Simone has hormones. Uh, she's getting her, she's got her sexy back. You know, I don't know if she ever had it, but she's got it now. And um, they're still not hearing each other. So that's frustrating. As a viewer of just like, you know, for him is like, just give him some, he'd be all right. He'd be happy and he won't be so grumpy and cranky and just like, 
ugh, you know what I'm saying? And then if she gave him some, maybe he'd be more inclined to pick up the phone and go, I love you. Just wanted to tell you that. Have a great day. And then she gets what she wants. But they're both stubborn, as they said in the episode. And um, neither one wants to fully give in to the other one. Which is ridiculous. It's like childish. Um, so, and then it ended with um, Simone letting him know she was sleepy. Meaning, we can go to bed, but you ain't getting none. And that's just sort of like, once again, that passive aggressive behavior where she not only told him he was, she was sleepy, but she told him what it meant that she was sleepy. And then she's going to expect him to be like, okay, dear, let's cuddle. No, mm -mm. don't work like that. No. So, um, we will move on to Jackie. Now, last episode, in this episode, Jackie ain't had a storyline. That's all we got really to say about Jackie. She had Eve on her table. Jackie's a good doctor. Eva is just one of the many celebrities we've seen her, you know, working on. I think she also was the doctor for one of the Braxtons or whatever. So, you know, there's really nothing we're getting from Jackie this season other than her presence um, and a little bit of advice. Um, Heavenly went to her anger management coach and he had said something that I actually am going to remember because I'm a writer and I might even have one of my characters say this, but honesty without compassion is brutality. And that describes um, Heavenly to a T because Heavenly seemingly is always trying to do good things for the cast, but then you know, what she feels is honest, like telling uh, Eugene and Toy to sit and face each other and for him to tell her, you know, about how she's always spending his money or whatever. You know, that is her conclusion of what she feels about that marriage. And that's not helping anyone. But that is honesty without compassion is brutality. You know, I like that. Now, Dr. Heavenly, if you ever see this, don't get that man on. I saw a chemistry between the two of them. It wasn't a lot of chemistry. It wasn't enough to say she would cheat. But I wouldn't be surprised if it, if she did. But I ain't trying to put that up in the air because I like you and Damon together. But um, yeah, I, maybe you should get a female <laughs> management coach. Okay, um, now I'm on the second side of the paper. Simone, um, oh, my note was Simone's hot twice in a row. Simone... I don't know what happened. Tomboy Simone has been sexing it up like a femme. <laughs> See, that's, that is called honesty without compassion is brutality. If y'all know what I mean when I say femme. But um, Simone was hot again. She was hot last episode and she's hot this episode. Her makeup's right, her hair's right, her outfit fit. She didn't look like awkward Simone that doesn't look like she can dress, be sex, or anything. She knocked it out the uh, out the park twice. Although uh, Mariah didn't this time. Mariah just looked kind of regular. You know, she wasn't the over-the-top Mariah that I like as far as, like, fashion-wise. Um... Curtis did get his hug, was my other note. When a man has cheated, and he's finally gotten his partner to uh, accept him back, for there's a time period where if you're sensitive about the other person's feelings, you know, you don't do certain things. And I know it's just a hug, but I know there's a part of Jackie, in, it was Simone in that particular outfit, she knows Simone would never give him none. Hell, she wouldn't give her own husband none. But uh, I felt a certain kind of way for Jackie. You know what I'm saying? So um, Curtis stepped back from the hugs for a while with the women. You know, or commenting on the sexiness. That's when you act like you're daredevil, like you're blind. You know you can see, 
but you but you act like you can't see. Be Daredevil for a while. Um, Simone is a big tease because she put all of that sexiness up for Curtis to, to uh, not Curtis, um, Cecil to, to enjoy. And he's like, yeah, I wish you wear this at home. And she's like, yeah, that's that tease, like that picture. Yeah, she want to put it in your face, but she don't want to put it in your face. Um, so, um, when Mariah showed up, uh, my heart stopped was my note because I was like, the party's going really well, everybody's cool, but then you got Care Bear over here who, who got, who got kicked, kicked in the gut, and then you got, you know, Heavenly who's no amount of counseling she gets really stops her from being Heavenly, um, <laughs> But uh, it, it heavenly used the B word a lot. She called her a low down dirty B. And then um, during a commercial break, it showed the scene coming up, which is I don't talk. Mariah says I don't talk to Dennis. I'm a doctor, which is a callback from like another episode. Um, but they were on their P's and Q's, and heavenly. I don't know what this guy did. Because he only untook, showed us two of the pictures, but it was like eight sitting up there. So I don't know how long their scene actually was. But, um, yeah. I hope you don't have too much of an effect on Heavenly. You know, I'd be worried for a marriage with Damon. I'm just saying. Um, Eugene smiling made me happy when he realized that the party was for him. You know, I said, you know, black love. Which there's not a whole lot of black love on television. There's a whole lot of black foolishness on television. But, you know, black love, you know, got some brownie points today. And um, I enjoy seeing that. Um, and then um, every episode, Simone kind of does something that makes me call her <laughs> a lesbian. Or, you know, kind of makes me make jokes about her and Jackie. In this episode, she she almost squeaked through. She almost got through without me being able to say anything with the L word. But um, when she told uh, Cecil um, she wished that he could be an OBGYN, in my mind, I instantly thought to myself, calling Dr. Jackie. <laughs> yeah, she wants an OBGYN in her bed. It just ain't you. I'm just saying. Um, so, uh, Quad was a no-show, and Contessa didn't call, and that really pissed off, um, mm. Toya, because as much as I gave Toya props for, um, making the party about her husband and not about her, we all know that Toya's role on this show was to be messy. Messy Toya. And, um... She just couldn't let the black love win over for to the very end. Instead, she got real petty and she started um, pretty much, you know, she was still mad that Contessa made fun of her have, for having a get out of debt party by having a huge party that will add debt to you. Um, so... Um, so she was in her feelings and I can kind of tell she wanted Contessa to be there because she actually was probably going to confront her, um, do some classic marriage medicine, whatever. But, um, Scott defended his wife and he was there for her and made sure that, you know, everyone knew that her father, um, came in late. He was sick. He called her so that. She could tell uh, Toya herself. Toya ended up, you know, over talking Contessa and hanging up on her, you know, um, in a very passive aggressive way. But a party that was supposed to be for Eugene, a party that was supposed to be a celebration of their relationship, suddenly had rain clouds, mist, doom and gloom, nobody looking happy, the shade overcasted everything and 
in my opinion, the party was ruined, you know, and I felt bad that I was rooting for Toya and then she let me down. We could have skipped that moment between her and Contessa, but I know that simply sets up the next episode when she and Contessa confront each other and um, we get, which probably, which will be one of two big fights we see next week. Um, the girls finally seeing Quad and making Quad's prediction come true that when she, you know, when she avoided them because they would be more confrontational than loving. And um, yes, Simone and all the rest are very confrontational because they're mad because she's been pretty much ignoring them and pretty much, you know, taking a crap on, on their friendship. And so, and then of course, like I said, Mariah hits, you know, quad, which is I'm just gonna be a big thing. It's gonna be a big thing. Um, so next week looked like it's really out of control. This week was really good. I think if the episode would have been perfect if Toya wasn't messy for a change and just let everyone have a happy moment and end the episode without drama with a person who isn't even there. Really? So, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I also have a Married to Medicine update of different things I found from over the web. I'm going to put that, I'm going to try to get that on at the same time as this review here. And, um, hey, I got more Married to Medicine stuff coming. I got more Brax and Family stuff coming. I've got the soap operas fall previews for all of the shows, as well as the weekend review. And um, a few, a lot of, I got a lot of videos coming out this week, so um, at least ten or more. So I got a lot of videos coming at you. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope you subscribe. Thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate you.